Hello everyone, this is Ashley Taylor here. I'm a lecturer at the UCF School of Visual Arts and Design, and I've prepared a tutorial on prepping your image for screen printing. So I'm no YouTube sensation. I will try to make this simple, and I will try to make it interesting and brief. So bear with me. Uh, what I have here is an image that has a few colors, and I need to actually separate each color onto its own artboard so that I can print it onto screen printing positive film. So that's what this tutorial is going to be about. So this is a, a poster I want to hang in the shop. Um, and I've set it up. I have my final print size set as my artboard, so it's going to be 11 by 17. Um, the disclaimer in this tutorial is I will not go into the Illustrator elements too much. Um, because I'm assuming you have had some Illustrator training. But again, most of this tutorial is quite simple. There are tutorials out there that go extensively into separating, but this is the basics here. So my artboard set to 11 by 17. My uh, tools that are open are the window, or excuse me, the tool menu, as well as the color panel, um, or swatches panel, whatever you prefer. Pathfinders open, layers, and stroke. You'll notice that I have outside of my artboard these little marks. So these marks are what you need, not necessarily like in the way I've done it, but you'll need to do a uh, multiple color print run. So I have crop marks here and I have registration marks. I, I put two up to see that you don't have to stick with what I have. Sometimes I've used an asterisk, um, other times I've used this tr more traditional sense of a registration mark where it's got these crosshairs and a circle. This is going to help you line up your image um, when you have multiple layers. So you'll notice my crop marks exist outside of my artboard because I don't want to see them or print them. Um, these two lines are going to dictate that I'm going to cut away this part of the paper and this will be my final image. So you'll notice I have it on all four corners of my image and away from the artboard. You don't want them inside or they'll be printed. So now that my image is ready, uh, what I want to do first is now get rid of my registration and crop marks because we're going to do a lot of moving around and the last thing you want is uh, for your crop marks to shift, you want them to stay in the right spot. So I've grouped them. I'm going to actually cut them and make a new layer called registration crop marks. And I'm going to paste them in there and then I'm going to just hide them and I'm going to lock them so that I can't touch them in this whole process of deconstruction. Because the next thing I'm going to do is deconstruct the image. But I'm going to keep this as my reference and I'm going to duplicate my artboard. I'm going to move it over out of the crop marks and I'm gonna start to assess what colors are out there um, this was made in draw and I'm sure there's some hidden layers that I could see there's multiple colors yeah there's a few colors that I don't even know where they are they probably exist so you're seeing this all happen in real time with me going through my file so the first thing I want to do is probably find an easy easy color um, oh, before I forget, labeling. So if you want to label each color, go ahead and set that up now. So color, I'm going to make it so it's left justified. And this is going to go in one spot next to your um, color, right next to your crop mark. So order or color, depending on what you want it to be. So. I'll probably do order and then I'll just make it something that's a little easier on the eyes. Probably just aerial. And bring it down to just roughly something that's printable and seen. Line it up there. It's left justified perfect so that whenever I input anything, it'll stay in the same place. And we're, I'll keep that unlocked. I'll lock it for now. 
All right. So let me start off with my key color, which is this black. And I notice when I click this, this is all grouped. I'm going to actually ungroup that now. I grouped it for the, the process, but because I want to find all of those black colors, and I'm going to select one of them, a good sign is I still see the black here, and then I'm going to go up and go to select similar objects. You can either just click this based on the default, so fill color, and I'm going to cut that, and you'll notice now that's where I start to see all my other colors that I probably did when I was in Adobe Draw. And then I'm going to paste it. So that's my only black color. What I'm going to do now, since it's all together, is I'm going to go into Pathfinder. See, it has all these paths. I no longer need that. So I'm going to combine them into one shape. And that way, it's kind of like, I use this a lot, but you're taking your laundry to the washer and you've, you're carrying it and slowly like your underwear drops and then a shirt drops and then you just pick it up and then another thing drops. The same thing here by using Pathfinder, everything stays. So I now have my one color ready to go. Um, I'll worry about layering second or you know in a second. I'll duplicate my artboard again. All right, I'm gonna select the same, cut it, You'll notice it didn't grab this because it's a slightly different color. What I'm going to do though is paste this together, combine it as a shape, and then select all this now and use this as well. Yeah, because it's so close, it's reading the same, I might as well make it all one color because I don't want to make a whole new color run just for that slight difference. So I'm going to select all of this, expand it because I notice that there is some type we don't want to have any type anywhere um, because that will change when you move it over and then lastly is this looks like it there is some color that didn't get picked so that's great uh, for investigating to just double check I know why what I'll do is I'll make my next layer and then I'll pick it apart. But this is great to learn like just how stuff can get lost or forgotten. So I'm going to duplicate one more. And I'm going to bring this lighter color over. So you notice there's these oranges. I'm not even worrying about that. I'm going to actually delete them. I didn't see them in my image. They were just some of my previous colors I was creating. So I'm going to delete, and then I'm going to select this color, select the same. So all that select same is doing is grabbing the same color. You'll notice that this color is slightly different. So I'm going to actually cut that all together, bring over to my last one, paste in place. So these are all in the same spot. It's important that they're in the same spot. If you just paste it, might not be. So now I have my three colors. Then what's left is some boo-boos or some ones that I just need to bring over. I think I'm going to bring them over. So now you want to make sure everything, so everything is combined so nothing gets lost. Remember that laundry analogy? Combined. Combined. And nothing's left behind. What I usually do is just to check is all paste everything back, take a look at it. You see it's it changed slightly because I merged these two colors, so I might lighten up this color a little bit back to that original. Yeah. I might even find that maybe it's just two colors. Who knows? And I'll undo, bring them back. And there we go. So now I have my separations here. You see this one's rather simple. Um, there's tutorials out there that use separations preview and everything. I find that that's too overwhelming. And this is a simpler way to see all my layers and make sure they're working together. Now what I'm going to do is unlock both of my crop marks and my label. I'm going to copy it 
And then I'm going to go ahead and paste on all artboards. So sometimes it's nice to me, sometimes it's not. I'm going to now, with all my colors separated, I now have to um, add my registration marks and my crop marks. So I'll go over here and I'll select all of this. And this either will work or won't. We'll find out. Uh, I'm going to paste on all artboards. Nope, didn't work this time. Illustrator does this thing where it'll think the artboards are over here, but they're not. So I will go into my artboards panel, copy it, go to the new artboard, select it, paste it in place, and paste that one in place as well. I don't want to drag anything because, again, you don't want anything to move. So now I have all of my artboards ready. I'll go ahead and change my order. So traditionally I do light to dark, so I'll do one it might be light blue. You could have an actual PMS color, Pantone matching system color. So um, traditional shops have the Pantone color, have the screen even, like the 230 mesh or whatnot. But for simplicity, we'll just do the color. Duplicated my layer apparently. Two. Uh, we'll go with botanical, and then we'll go with three, key, or black, this black isn't always your key color, but for this it is. And then, I no longer need this artboard, I'll just get it out of here. I usually save it like this, but there's one last thing you need to do, is the printer only prints using black ink so you have to set your colors to black even though they're not the colors uh, they have to be black here so and you need true 100% black because that will be a black that no light will shine through we don't want a gray we want a black so go ahead to your color panel and make sure you're in CMYK mode if you're not go to file document color mode CMYK and then go ahead and drag this across or select this right here. Luckily, there is a default that's 100% black. So you'll do that with all of these. That's why everything's merged. If they're not merged, you get problems. So now we have our three. Um, because they're labeled down here, we know what colors they are. And we're good to go. So that was separating. The last thing you'll do is whatever printer you have, so I usually save this, so I'll file, save as, uh, separations, the, maybe, you know, sync, separation. And you'll drag it on over to whatever file you have. So our printer at school is 13 by 19. Um, file, new. I'm going to make sure the color mode's the same, CMYK, so that when you're ready to print and paste it into whatever's ready to be printed. So for the, in this case, it's perfect for our film, and then you'll hit print, and you're good to go.